We had to fight to get a meal. They had grown for being Jews. We had to fight to get a meal. That's why we right to get a deal. He on the team, we gotta eat, you know. Swipe the skills tag. Keep it riding for the fam. You gotta like them. We're getting real straight up. We're getting the pass bad. Work up in the trash bag. I'll pass a lot to take the test before I pass class. Yeah, and my family needs bread. I had to come correct. Yes, sir. This is Brandon Marshall here. We're live from Las Vegas in the Wynn Resort. This is I Am Athlete Live, and we got a major guest. I'm going to take a drink and take a toast for this one because this is real big. Um, my brother, arguably, you know, the best. Well, he, he's probably going to say the best at his position. Um, definitely going to go down as one of the greatest wide receivers to ever play the game. But I'm excited about this one. You know, this is something new. You always got to try something new. Taking a shot live and also streaming live on YouTube. Here we go. Our next guest, the best guest, we got one of the greats, Devontae Adams. Devontae Adams, man. I can't, I can't even, there's nothing I can say. I'm just going to say Devontae Adams. Everybody know what time it is. <laughs> We overdue. Listen, this is what I, this is how we're going to start the show. First, I want to say thank you. Give you your flowers for just being a stand-up guy and breaking bread with us coming on the show. Um, I also want to take a shot. Just take it. Not a shot. We'll just sip on a little drink. There's some smooth Lobos. We're supporting another athlete, LeBron, Maverick, Carter. They got the Lobos, right? So this is the Lobos brand. Um, so first off, bro, uh, I text you and I hit you up and I say, meet me at the Wynn Resort. Yeah. And you said, okay. And I said, the Blue Wire Studio. You said, I've never been to the Blue Wire Studio. Mm -hmm. Right? So can someone meet me? Yeah. I said, okay, I'll meet you. So I pull up, you pull up, 30 seconds later, and you pull up in a nice, I think it was a Lamborghini yeah. with a car seat in the back. Yeah, 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 that's the dad car. <laughs> That's exactly what I wanted to talk about. Bro, how do you turn a Lamborghini into a dad car? Man, it's it's process of elimination. She ain't hopping in. Neither one of my girls going in the, in the Aventador. Occasionally the Bentley. Not the Rolls. So I guess it's going to be it's gonna be the, the Urus. Are you a car guy? I am. I love cars, man. So you just named, what, four or five cars or is that four cars? Four, yeah. All right, so four cars. Can you can you put them in order? Like which, which cars you like the most? I would probably say the dad car. I mean, I love it. It's my everyday thing. It's what I it's what I roll in every day. The Bentley is like the classic one. It depends on where I'm going and and who I'm around too. Because right. if I really want, if I'm in a real kind of classy area, we gotta do uh, we gotta we gotta go in the Bentley. But if I just want to be the big dog, we gotta hop in the Cullinan. Right, the Cullinan. I don't think I've ever been in the Cullinan. Did I say that correctly? I think so. I think I'm, I don't know. You might I might be saying you. It wrong. You know what I want, bro. Um, I really got my eyes. Can you guess? It's a. It's one of the most exotic whips out there. And salute, salute. By the way, you salute. About the, okay. Yeah. Salute. Love you, brother. Cheers, my um. It's one of the most exotic whips out there, and it's gonna be my next car. And I and I I want to be. I, I want to say my 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 heart says. My mind says. My my mind says that I'm two to three years away. Uh -huh. My mind my mind is telling me. Maybe five. SUV or sports car? It's a sports car. One of price, the ones out. Price, price tag, seven figures. Ooh. You talking about that Bugatti? Ah! Yes. Yeah, that's, that's <laughs> you, yeah. you do that. You do that. We can't. I'm getting rid of all my cars. I'm taking a taxi everywhere. At that well, point. here's the thing. And I did this when I first started playing ball. Like, I put my eyes on something. And then I'm like, yo, I'm working for that, right? Like when I first got in the league, there was uh, Rod Smith, Champ Bailey. Yeah. I used to go to their crib when we were when I was a rookie. Right. And I'm like, God, damn, like this is what I want, right? And it took five years to get there. And then also like my rookie year when Coach Shanahan stepped to me, he was like, yo, we want to put you in the starting lineup. And this was like week seven. I went went out and got me a screen TV. It was outside of my budget. Yeah. And for me, it was like, I'm gonna buy this because I gotta go. Pay it off now. Yeah, yeah, right. So that's what the Bugatti means to me. Okay, I like I like that. I mean, you you damn sure picked the most exotic out there. Right. I, I was I was thinking I'm like maybe is it is it like 
you know, a, a upscale Lambo, something new, maybe maybe a, the SF90 uh, Ferrari. He said the Bugatti. The Bugatti. He went to the, the tippy top with that one. That's right. And Ooh. if you want to fix this to be more comfortable, you can. Oh, yeah, uh, we we're it. here, Blue Wire Studios, beautiful. Uh, this is where they're amplifying voices of athletes that usually don't have the mic to tell their stories. And that's what I Am Athlete is. I'm sitting here with my brother. Um, we have so much to talk about. We're going to talk about um, – his back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back years, going over 1,500 yards. We're going to talk about his time in Green Bay. We're going to talk about uh, his 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 here his time here in, in Las Vegas. You got Jimmy G. You got Derek Carr. You got Aaron Rodgers. Bro, you you got a lot of cool names, yeah. cool people that have thrown you the ball or will throw you the ball. So we'll we'll hit that. I also want to talk about um, parenting. I want to talk about uh, marriage, man. Like I feel like you're one of the dudes that are that came in. And figure it out quickly and a true pro. So I feel like you got so much to offer to the platform, so much to offer to us. Um, so I'm excited about that. Shout out to the Win Resorts for giving us this space. Shout out to the I Am Athlete team uh, for hustling to get this done. Um, I'm gonna jump right in. Let's do it. How are you doing, bro? On our platform, we always check in. You know, um, I don't think it's as critical. For you right now because you're already you're in a locker room you're active yeah but when you transition you retire there's a lot of our guys that are suffering that are that are um in in bad positions and we don't have the locker room to check in on each other like if i walk into the locker room when you walked into the locker room today did you go to practice you got otas yeah, yeah, yeah. okay good job yeah, i'm there yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah I mean. so when you walk in right like there's 90 something dudes in the mm -hmm. in the locker room yeah you know every single day and then once you get into the season there'll be 50 something guys and you know when guys are off and we kind of hold each other accountable and you have that camaraderie. Right. Um, but we don't have that, you know, when you retire. And I think we have to be intentional in creating that. But I do think, you know, active players, you know, we can, and I say we, I'm putting myself back in as if I was still there. Um, you know, we can do a better job of going deeper, right? And, and not just saying, yo, what's up, you good? Right. Or how you doing? You say, you know, I'm good. Yeah. No, how are you, bro? One to ten, how are you? Mentally, yeah. personally, and professionally. So one to ten on those three things. I, re I respect that. I appreciate you you checking up on that. I think that you make a good point in that. It's a lot of people, just just men in general. Even even when we in the locker room, we tend to, you know, you ask the guy how he doing just in passing. It's, it's usually quick. It's almost like they don't want to overshare with the expectation that, you know, you didn't really ask because you cared to know. It's right. more like you was just, it was the obligatory, let me see how you're doing. So it's always like, yeah, I'm cool. You know, throw a quick two cents. So I appreciate you asking that. But um, I'm doing great, man. Honestly, I'm in a, I'm in a really good spot um, in life, which is a, a big reason why I came out to Vegas. Yep. Um, being in Green Bay for eight years shaped a lot of who I am today. And I, um, I'm very appreciative for my time there for sure. But after so much time being away, being in the Midwest for, for eight years, you know, and then coming here for my, for my ninth and then now going into my 10th, time is flying. You know, yeah. my kids are getting older and all that type of stuff. So it's real important for me, you know, the quality of life aspect and, you know, to, to have a lot of things that Vegas, that Vegas offers at your disposal. That's done a lot for my, my mental, you know, because last three years in Green Bay, I mean, you know, everybody knew the success we had as a team, you know, and obviously I was blessed enough to have some uh, individual success as well. But, um, you know, it's, it's, you would think going 13 and three, 13 and four, or whatever, three years in a row, um, you know, you would be in a really good spot mentally. And I guess part of it was kind of, we took that for granted. A couple of us took it for granted. So you didn't really use winning as your, your sense of happiness, which is honestly something that I feel good about too at the same time. Because if you get hung up and you live your life on, on wins and losses, mm -hmm. I mean, you could you you don't live on a roller coaster. It's gonna be tough, man. And being in this game for ten years now, I can tell you that football has brought me up and it's brought me down. So now to kind of live it in a in a space of, you know, I don't I don't really look at myself as as a failure if I don't have a great game. I don't look at myself as a failure or my teammates as failures if we don't have a if we don't go out there and get the dub. It's more about the process and and you know the process with life as well. So. Like I said, having a lot of things we can do here, being in public a lot more and having, you know, Vegas is built for me to be here a little bit more um, than Green Bay was, you know, by Halloween or 
at least by you know or before Thanksgiving, you can't even go outside. No, you hit you hit it right. It was Halloween, yeah. October. It's, it's oh, early. Yeah, I don't want I don't want my Green Bay folks getting mad at me. I no, mean, they know you, know you love them. I love them to death, and I and I like I said, I'm appreciative of my time. But being able to come out here and you know I can go outside with my, with my daughter in Vegas at, at nine nine o'clock if if you know she if she napped during the day, which she probably ain't. But if if we got some time, I can take them outside and. and in Green Bay, I mean that's out that's out the gate halfway through the season. So right. having having the ability to even in the winter be able to take her outside on the play structure, go how, go do things like that. How how big is that, bro? Speak on that, man. Like I was drafted to the Denver Broncos in two thousand and six, yeah. and I re- never never I will never forget when I landed. My mom hit me up and she's like, "Son, I just want to give you a heads up that you know less than five percent of the population is minority, mm-hmm. and it's maybe a culture shock for you, right?" Yeah. Um, the winter uh, and the seasons, Denver is beautiful, and, and there's so much more to do in Denver than there is in Appleton, Wisconsin, or wherever the hell you were living. Yeah. But, but you know, it was definitely a culture shock for me, and, and it was tough those first couple of years, being young, 22, 23, in a city like that, uh, when, when I was used to being in Atlanta, I was used to being in, in South Florida or right. Florida. Um, can, can you talk a little bit about, you know, how your environment can shape you know, that that quality of life because the Ringer, um, you know, article came out, shout out to the Ringer, shout out to you for doing that and, and really owning your narrative. Like when 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 I read that, I was like, saw everything on line, I was like, hold on, what did he say? You know, because not a lot of dudes is willing to really speak their truth yeah. and, and be real. Like we be diplomatic, yeah. you know, we're kind of institutionalized. So to see that it was big, but you talked about it in a Ringer as far as like how Vegas uh, improve your quality of life, and you talked about your mental as well. Right. So how tough was it in 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 Appleton, Wisconsin? Well, I mean, this it, it was it was tough, but it was good for for a young player coming in there um, who hadn't had mm. any money, got drafted with. I mean, literally, I don't even know if I had a bank account at that time. So, you know, to to be coming from where I come from and and to give the second round pick a lot of money, you know. Um, it was good for that because it, it kept me grounded, kept me focused on what I had to do. It was great for what it, what I was there for, which was to play ball, mm. and, and it kept me focused. Like I said, so um, got got me married maybe earlier than what I would have thought as when I was younger, you know. Yeah. And um, you know, took my my wife girlfriend at the time out there and and started a, a you know my my new life out there, and it was it was dope. I, I really enjoyed it, but like we said, just having being being a kid from Cali and being exposed to a lot more. It was it was tough on me throughout the season, and then yeah. it was kind of like a scramble, obviously because of the weather, and then partly wanting to get dive into the off season as soon as everything ended. Whereas right. now, I mean, you know, you can really focus on your on your playoff run. You know, God willing, you you make it if uh, as a Raider, and that's obviously our goal. Um, but but right after the year, you know, I can just get right into my groove. I don't have to start scrambling trying to get cars shipped. I don't have to worry about getting the dogs getting getting planes right. and doing all this stuff. So it's just a whole different. Well, you know, mindset I have at the end of the year. That, that's interesting that you say that, bro, because I feel like I, I was a cat that got married younger, and I feel like, you know, when home is good or if you have a great supporting uh, support system at home, mm-hmm. you make less mistakes, you're less distracted, right? And, and so you said something interesting because when we used to fly in to to Wisconsin to play you guys Green Bay, Bro, like we no, actually we didn't even fly. We took a bus, and then there was only like one okay hotel. And no, no disrespect to <laughs> to Wisconsin, amazing people. Yeah. The fan base is phenomenal, one of the best out there. But comparing it to different markets like Dallas and New York and Chicago and L.A. and Miami, Atlanta, it's totally different, right? So like we used to drive in, bro. And there was no place to eat but like one steakhouse at that. Uh, was it? I don't even know the Re- name. Republic. There That's you it. go. Republic <laughs> Chop House. Yeah, man. That's Is that what every, you proposed? Every birthday. No, I ain't proposed. I proposed in, in the Bahamas. You know, I had to <laughs> I had to do it right, you know. Uh, but, yeah, Republic Chop House. That, that's the thing I'm talking about, though. Yes. Like, you know, so when, when it's a we got time to go get dinner, you got to be ahead. You got to be ahead of the game. It's one private room, you know, so it's not like I'm going to sit in the middle of the restaurant and be in there, you know, amongst everybody, which would be great. But it's just the reality, you know, can't. It's not as easy to do as what I would like or as as it was when I first got in the league. So as things kind of went along, it, it made things like that tougher, which kept me in the house more, you yeah. know, and, and I couldn't really enjoy life, enjoy the season. It was practice, come home, 
be with my family, which is obviously the, the most important thing to me, being with my kids and, and my wife. So having that was, was great, but just limited us so much to where, you know, I needed a little bit more in that aspect. And obviously we know the, the football part, the, that kind of allowed yeah. me to come here as well. You know what? Now that I think about it, bro, like I think uh, Denver, the Denver, uh, in, like that environment, and even, you know, being in Green Bay playing there, it probably was a cheat code for us, right? And I say us, uh, it's really about you. <laughs> but I'm going to throw myself in there because I feel like, bro, like if I was me, definitely me. You're, you, were, you came in way more mature than I, I did. But, like, if I got drafted to the Miami Dolphins and Coach Saban wanted to draft me there, but, he, he, you know, he, he went in another direction. Or if it, if it was Atlanta or um, New York, bro, I, I can't imagine how many mistakes, how many more mistakes I would have made, right. right? Do you think part of your success is, you know, Green Bay? And I'm not talking about the quarterback. I'm not talking about the team, the organization. I'm talking about just being in that. Geographically. Correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think um, to a certain extent, I mean, I can't say no because, um, you know, it depends on what types of stuff you're talking about, like, I'm not out here. I was I was raised right, man. I, I got too many people counting on me and and relying on me to be who who I'm supposed to be. And this is who I'm supposed to be. This this type of person. So, you know, with with certain things, you know, I, I can't even put my finger on what it would be. But as far as I'm talking about, like going out, nightclubs. Oh, you night, know, well, I'm uh, not. I'm uh, not really women, like, right? Yeah, like, I'm not. Where I've been with my wife. I mean, she the, one of the first people I met at Fresno State. So we've been together since I was in school. So. That's never been a concern of mine and never been something that I've been worried about. Um, you know, I used to go out a little bit more when I was younger, but never never got to a point where I was like, this could be a problem for me ever. You know, it's just something that was fun. I don't really love drinking like that anyway. You know, shout out to <laughs> you. Hey, I, you got to I, I, I have a little drink with my dog while we, while we shoot, but, um, you know, it's, I never, I never been a troublemaker, never been really a guy to fall and, and follow the crowds and stuff like that. You know, I'm usually the one that, that's getting followed. Where does that come it. from? I'm just authentic to who I am. I, never, I know, but like, you, like how? Like, it, I don't, I, I, got, I got no answer for you. Today. I mean, I just, I, this is how I, whatever I feel is the way that I, I try to project that on everybody and not what I'm supposed to be or what right. people expect me to be, which is why people are always shocked when I, I meet people in certain settings and, you know, they met, whether they know who I was before that or they didn't. A lot of times if they knew something about me, they know I'm not a dummy or they know some of this stuff. But when I chop it up with them and they see I'm a, I'm a level guy and it's just like going through the casino and talking to anybody else, you know, and obviously it's a two-way street, so it kind of depends on who I'm dealing with too. Right. But, you know, if it's a cool person, I meet them, they're always shocked. And I'm like, this is how I was when I was in school, so why, would, why should I be a different person now just because I've achieved a certain level of, you know, success? Yeah, we see a lot of guys, bro, when they make it, you know, switch up. I mean, hell, John Moran. And I wouldn't say switch up because I really don't know his story like that. But mm -hmm. for, for, for a young brother to, you know, for a second time find himself in this position, it's like, why? Like, bro, you're, you got a $200-something million contract, yeah. probably making $20 million off the, off the court, if not more. Right. You know, uh, what are you doing? What, what's your thoughts on, on that? I mean, it's a, it's, a, it's a tricky one, man. It's confusing, really, for me because – Things happen and you make mistakes in a moment. You know, you never know if alcohol is involved sometimes with the, and that'll mess up your thought process and or or your your decision making, should I say? Um, but then when you see when something like that happens a second time, it's like that's the part that's confusing. It's like if you get caught slipping, everybody get caught slipping in some sort of way. Like mm -hmm. whether it's like you know you you was digging in your nose and I saw you, or you know he he's on video with his friends and somebody just so happened to get him. But when 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 you when you're aware, that's the part that that confuses me, and I don't like to get into people's business and all of that. Like that's that's your job to to obviously do that and to, and to talk about stuff like that. So who my job? Yeah, that's that's your job. Yeah, you gonna put me? That's kind of your I'm job a, to be in people's at, business a little bit. But but it, you know, it's not not in a me? not in a messy way. I think the way you do it is the perfect way. By the way, so I I, I think you go about it the right way. You just just like you were talking about saving. You know, he wanted. You always say things in the right way. I feel like so. Definitely, definitely not a not a knock at you, but a media now. <laughs> I am though. You are, you are. You don't. You want to be in the league still, right. like you said, but but yeah, it's just confusing to me because when you have such a unique opportunity and you one of the faces of the NBA, you would just hope, you know, as another young black man, I, I'm rooting for him to 
to do the right things because, like I said, I, I, I look at the way that I do everything, and I like to say that I do it the right way. Right. I play my position the right way. I treat people the right way. And, you know, I just I try, to, I try to be a good dude all around. I'm not perfect at all, but I at least set out to do so. You know, right. so if something slips up, like, every now and then, obviously after the, the Chiefs game, when I push the guy after the game, like, some, you're going to slip up and have things like that happen. But for the, for the most part, I try to keep my nose clean um, and, and not blow a, a golden opportunity. What was the guy's name that you the, – the, the, the cameraman that you I have, got in a little – I have no idea. You haven't taken him golfing yet? I know you apologized right after, and you, you I, the I way did. you handled that was perfect. But. I, I try I try to handle it, but now it, it ended up turning into a little bit more. So I don't know if I can speak on anything. But, I mean, it's, it's, it's just not, my, it's, must not know. But, it's it, yeah, it, it ended up being a police report filed and some stuff that went on with that. Um, Is it done? Yeah. I mean, it should be, but it's okay. unfortunately it's not. And bro, speak to that, bro. Like, speak to that. Uh, you know, like really speaking to the the younger athlete, or hell, even the the pro guys and shit. Maybe some retired guys, because mm -hmm. some of us still don't get it. Right. You know how we are a target and how we need to move. Right. You talk about a situation in between the lines and running in the tunnel and. You know, we're talking about something as simple as, you know, pushing a cameraman out of your out of your out of out of your way, and and then apologizing right after, and then that turn into a police report and turn into potential other things. Um, what can you tell the younger athlete or just athletes, period, of how they suppose how they're supposed to move because there is a target on their back? I mean, exactly what you said is the truth. I mean, we we have a target on our back, and people are maybe not as, as authentic and, and genuine as what we are sometimes, especially, you know, myself. Like I said, I pride myself on that. So you got to always protect yourself. And, and by that, I mean <clears throat> do whatever it is to, to avoid, you know, any bad situations at all costs. Like things like that, things happen in the moment. And obviously um, I wish that that never happened, even though it wasn't in my mind something that should have been magnified as, mm -hmm. as much as it was, which I think in the grand scheme it didn't get too crazy and, and you know, um, shortly after it happened, things started to come down and people weren't as emotional. But you got to do, like, I just got to be as, I got to be a little bit cleaner because, you mm -hmm. know, I'm the, I'm, the, I'm the clean one in the league. I'm the one mm -hmm. people don't know as much about. You know, I try to stay, keep a low profile every so often, you know, to be an article or something that I do and, and kind of tell my story or, or talk about whatever. But you got to protect yourself. You got to be as smart as you can be in any situation. And, and it's never worth it to, especially when it comes mm -hmm. to a physical thing and somebody trying to, you know, take advantage of you potentially or or whatever the case may be. Right. I'm not calling people, you know, this name or that name, but it's it's the reality. It's, it, people are after that, and it's an easy way to to come up. So, one hundred percent situation, you just got to be as smart as you can and avoid it at all costs. And it's everything that we do, bro. Like for me, you know, I had this amazing house in South Florida, and we had landscapers that would come once a week. And uh, they had to call. We had three pit bulls, beautiful dogs. They all passed away now. By now, they all passed away. Um, but beautiful dogs, nice. I mean, they're babies. Yeah. And so <clears throat> they didn't call this one time, and my dogs were in the backyard. So Buddha, my my baby, the the youngest, runs up to a landscaper. And was playing and jumps on him and put his paws on him. He falls down. Right? He comes in and says, the dog bit me. The dog scratched me. The dog attacked me. That turns into a big lawsuit. Yep. I got cameras. Yeah. Bro, the cameras caught everything. That didn't happen. It didn't happen. But he's trying to use, oh, Brandon Marshall, 12,000 square foot crib. Right? That'll do it. Pitbull. That'll do the it. The stigma around the dog. And he tried to do that to get the bag. And look, no case. I had the video, and I still paid him $50,000, bro, because to fight it, to go to court, was going to cost me $100,000. Right, right. Right? And that sucks because sometimes when you know somebody is lying about a situation like that or something, you know that they weren't truthful all the way and, and it's not worth it, but you, you got to think about your bread at the same time. So that's, that's tough. I went through the same thing. Um, and like I said, it's still actively going on, unfortunately. So I can't get into it as right. much as you know. I'd like to talk to you about it, um, but but yeah, I, I definitely feel you on that. There was definitely um, some people that weren't as truthful as they probably should have been in the moment, and 
is it's led to this being right, right. That's what it is. Too much, yeah. Yeah, that's what it is. Um, there's so much to talk about. Again, guys, we're gonna get to Aaron Rodgers. We'll get to um, your top five wide receivers. Your favorite. Your favorite thing <laughs> to do in the world. <laughs> I heard that I heard I heard I heard a little birdie told me that this is gonna be your last top five this list last that one. you ever do. This is the last one. I, I sure? said I said I was done. I told a couple people I was done, but then you decided you want to do this. I knew it was coming, so I started thinking <laughs> a little bit. I'm, I might have to think on the spot a little bit too. So it's a good thing we got some time. Well, well, this too many what, people. This is what we're gonna do. We're gonna go to break here. All right, so they're gonna tee up this video. We're gonna go to break, and that's gonna give you a little bit more time to think about your top five. Right, and when right. we come back. Maybe we'll jump into the top five. Okay. And then we'll get into everything else. Let's do it. That, that sounds good? I'm good with that. All right. After the break, we'll be back and we'll get into my brother's top five. <laughs> Such a good conversation. We'll get back to the conversation shortly. But first, I want to show some love to some of the partners that continue to fuel energy into our platform to keep conversations like this going. Amazon. Big shout out to Amazon. And when you think about Amazon, a lot of times you think about one or two services. You think about free shipping, you think about Amazon Prime. But the reality is Amazon is made up of a suite of services. Prime Fast, Prime Video, Amazon Music Prime, and free shipping. Prime is where you can go to pursue your passions. As a former professional athlete, I personally love all the sports documentaries, but I also spend a lot of time watching a lot of documentaries in film and production because this is my new thing and that's what I'm transitioning to. A lot of times when I'm driving home from shooting a couple episodes of I Am Athlete or Paper Route, I'm listening to Amazon Music Prime just to detach and relax and reset for the next day. Whatever your interests are, whether you love sports, whether you love fitness like I do, Prime allows you to get more out of your interest. That's what makes Prime so special. From shopping to streaming, whatever it is, it's on Prime. Visit Amazon.com slash Prime. Whatever your interests are, you can find it there. That's Amazon.com slash Amazon Prime. All right, here we go. All right, so tell the people what you said to me earlier. I sent you over, you know, like, look, bro, I want you to think about, you know, uh, your answer when it comes to parenting, when it comes to marriage, and also your top five. Those are three things. Like, I didn't give you everything I want to talk about because I want you to I want to keep you on your toes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I wanted you to be very uh, thoughtful with these answers. Um, so I sent those over to you, and then you said, yo, B, like, this is my last time giving the top five. Why is that? Cause it's, I mean, it's just too much pressure. You got, you got a couple, you got a couple, you got a couple reasons for real. And this is, this is the real one is too much pressure, meaning it's going to be some, somebody it's just, and it's too many guys, which is kind of one, one, a one B slash one and two. The pressure comes from there being so many good receivers now. Like, I feel like when I came in a league, like you could pick the, the, the top five yeah. or, or the best receiver in the league. Like now it's a lot of speculation. Obviously, I still don't think it's nothing to think about. We talk about who's the best, but you know there is some people feel certain ways. So right. you know, and there's a lot of really good talent. You got these young dudes coming in from LSU and all that. What up? What up? Um, and and they coming in ready out right. the gate. And right. I and the, like when I came in, like I felt good about where I came in and and in the place that I was in. And you know, I had a solid rookie year for me getting my feet wet. But like I didn't come in like how Odell came in and. Right. And Chase and and Jess, like these dudes coming in, like like six year why, vets. Why is that? You think is it? Why is that? I don't really know, honestly. I I don't know if they was. I can't really attribute it to the competition because. I, and here's what I'll say: When I was in high school, or even in college, like in college more so, we were, we were actually training. But when I was in high school, it was like workouts and stuff like that. But it wasn't like for me. Like I was at a real training facility working with these route god and route like you know so many people yeah. on Instagram Gold these people feet. yeah it's it's a it's a lot of different guys that that's running right. these pages now and and they and they helping out these young guys and all of this receiver factory right it's a million of them yeah so when I was coming out like it wasn't it was more so about I was hooping and then going to play football like I was a two sport dude so I wasn't really training and I didn't really have the same skills that they had early like that so I feel like that's a big part of it coming in like. You know, a little bit readier. You know, my theory is it's seven on seven. Did you play seven on seven? I, I never played seven that's on seven. That's it, bro. I think that's I, – I truly – for me, they're playing year-round. Like what you just said. Yeah. You play ball, 
Then football's over, you go to the next thing, you may go to track. Did right. you run track? I didn't run track. Run track? I was just hooping, hooping football. So then you go to hoop, right? So like nowadays, bro, these dudes is, is seven on seven is year round. Right. That's my theory. Um, is that, you know, you got these wide receivers playing at a high level early because they're so skilled how they run routes. I mean, it's how you I mean, you set the tempo there still to this day and, and you have the bar high of, you know, how you release, how you get into your break and mm -hmm. how you can get creative at the top of your route or break somebody off. So um we didn't see that when I First guy in the league. It was just super simple. Mm -hmm. Got an eighteen yard comeback, straight stem, stick, right. boom, break, get out of it. Um, so, with all that being said, <clears throat> can we get into these top five? And, and, and I heard what you said, <laughs> but I got to put more pressure on you. You got to put yourself in there, bro. I got to put myself in it. Yeah, you already, but you already sit it. You sit it in the ringer, uh, the ringer. Um, uh, article mm -hmm. and you just said it kind of today where you was like there really ain't no thinking that's why I'm like I don't I, in order to get another body in there you know maybe a maybe a five whether it's a 1b or a 5b I, that's that was my thought process but if you want if you just want four of the guys then I can get you four of the guys you know what go ahead do it your way right. if you want one a one b one c one d like one I said, e, I and then still, two two this that whatever we can right this that. second I still don't even know exactly what I'm going to go with, but I'm not going to make it too complicated by doing the win. And, 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 and if you can give me a little bit uh analysis around why you like these guys, what do they do good, right. what do you respect about it? All right. I, I think it's – I think it's – um. See, you're just a nice guy. You don't want to hurt nobody's feelings. Yeah, I am. I am a good guy. See, and, people people try to try and paint me like I'm a villain these days, but I'm a good guy. See, I'm, I'm trying to – Nobody paints you as a villain. See, you yeah. just hear that. You have – one little situation where you bumped into a guy, you bumped into a guy after a game, and now you're talking about you a villain. Please. All right, all right. You ain't got no mug shot. Nah, and I you won't. You ain't been arrested like me. You ain't got no, no DUI. <laughs> like, if you don't stop this madness, and y'all out there oh, calling man. this guy a villain, would y'all stop this madness? This is one of the greatest pe human beings it's ever. It's their fault. Yeah, yeah. Right. What are we talking about? All yeah. right. All right. So you said I could leave myself out. So obviously, you know, no, no, you no. know how I feel. Yeah, you. I, which no, one? Which put one? yourself in, but you can do the one A, one B, one C, two this, whatever. So, so based off what I've what I'm doing and what I've done at a at a high level for, I feel like the most consistent amount of time of anybody that's playing currently, I I still can't. I mean, I don't know if I will ever until I'm done. We'll see. What you know, I'll be real, but I can't say that anybody's better than me at my position in the league. Um, but if I had to go, if I left myself out, or if I had to go. One B, I would I would go Jets right now. Mm -hmm. He's just he's too consistent. He's making really really tough grabs. He um he got a different swag to him. He didn't damn near change the world with the gritty. I know he didn't. He's not the founder, but he mm -hmm. he came through and and revolutionized the the Selly game with the with the gritty. So I got him, you know, one B or or one if I'm not in it. Yep. I gotta go in order, or is this just listening? Yeah, you gotta go in order, bro. There's pressure, like oh we, people want to know. Oh, yeah. All right. Um, what, what, what do you? What do you? So, so what? What makes uh, Justin Jefferson nice? Like I said, it's the consistency. It's the dog in him. I see the the way he plays the game is he plays he plays a game very fast, and he plays the game. He keeps getting better too. We saw what he did uh, year one, and he came out and wowed us, and then he did it again. And it's just to keep doing it like that and getting better. You see yep. him. You see him getting better with his routes. Um, I talked to him a few times. I mean, he, he even said last year. You know, until until going into this past year, he had me as one. Until this past year, <laughs> he was gonna come in and take over. And I love the mentality. So that right. that right there, like there's certain guys that say whatever just just because they feel like they're supposed to say as a receiver. He's supposed to be like, oh, I'm the best in the league. I'm the best receiver on the team, or whatever it is. But you know, certain guys that play like it, and then you got to put something behind it, like how, what he has. And at this point, he can feel good about you know the the way he's playing the game. And I definitely, I'm a, definitely a fan of him. Like I said, that dog mixed with the consistency on top of that, um, I got to put him in there. Um, and if I had to go to the next one after that, man, see this is hard, bro. I'm gonna let you get it. It's hard. Let me, take, let me take a sip of this. Bro. <laughs> let me take a sip of this. Hey, let me tell you this, bro. You know how many dudes stop talking to me, stop returning my calls. This I shouldn't even tell you this. So you gonna say this and then have me? 
Bro, like, you know, I was on Inside the NFL on Showtime for almost 10 years and, you know, obviously got this this platform now, I Am Athlete and Paper Route and other things that we're doing. And you got to be very careful what you say. Like, I, I mentioned, I said something about a dude like, oh, well, I wouldn't have worn that. Dude, stop talking to me for two years. I said something about, like, I, there was one one debate we had. I'll say it. Jalen Ramsey got mad at me. I had to pull up on Jalen Ramsey, like, bro, like, last camp. What he got mad? What was he mad about? So we, we had Asante Samuels on our show. Junior or, or? Senior. Senior, okay. So Zant comes on and basically says that Jalen Ramsey is, isn't great. And I'm sitting there on this show like, no, what are you talking about? No, I, I, I like Jay. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So we had this whole debate. That man stopped, like, he, we really ain't talked like that, but, like, he stopped replying he to my little y'all. DMs. He had, a, he said, he, he messaged, I think he messaged me and said, bro, like, I don't, I don't respect this or something like that. Wow. And then I tried to, you know, hit him up like, bro, did you watch the show? Do you not know that I defended you? Yeah. yeah. No reply. And it wasn't until yeah. on camp, I pulled up. Ran up on him like, bro, run. come on, What's up? bro. What's up? Yeah. But he was really mad. He was like, bro, it was on your platform. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you got to be careful. Bro, football players are sensitive. They are. They are. I mean, it's just so many of us. We got the helmet on. So we just, we everybody, they, they fighting for the fighting for the attention, fighting for the spot. Go ahead. That's for me. That's for you. Yeah, that's okay. for me. I'm giving you, I'm trying yeah. to buy you time. So you got okay. Justin so, Jefferson yeah. uh, at number, you got, you won A, you won. Just go Justin Jefferson two, and then you go two two B whatever. Okay. And then so I got I got Jettas at, at two, um, three right now. I would have to say Reek. I mean Reek Reek the way he doing is still. I mean he went to a new place like me and and did exactly what he do. I mean it's it's hard to argue with consistency and it's hard to argue with dominance and that's what he's been doing. You know he can affect the game so many different ways too. Right. He's, he's fast. He runs a lot better routes than what people give him credit for. Got got really good feet, um, and like I said, he a playmaker. He shows up and has he had like 10, 180 yard games last year. Like I look up and I'm like, how many times these how many times they throwing the ball over right, here? Right. Like this is crazy. So you got to you got to still put Reek um, in there. I put Reek at three. I will put at four. Um, I'm gonna make some people mad with this one. Mm. I'm going to make some people mad. Remember, this, this is your last one, too. This, this is my last one, yeah. And, and it's okay, it's okay cuz I mean, we're going we're gonna to see what this year look like, but I believe in this guy. And I think that this guy and I think who I'm going to put at five, that one might make some people mad, too. But mm. I'm, I'm ready to do that today. Um, and I got to think of who I'm going <laughs> to put first That's out suspense. of these two. That's suspense. Um, Monte Adams, last top five ever. Like, well, when you retire, will you do a top five? Yeah, if I'm talking, I get on here. I can say whatever, you know, and then I won't really care as much. But these are my these are my guys. I've been around these guys for for okay. a long time. So right now we got Justin Jefferson at two. You're yeah. Devonte Adams at one. Devonte Adams put himself at one. Yeah. Okay. Uh, two is Justin the Jet Jefferson. Two A. Yeah. Is, two is is Jess. We gonna go. Two B. Two B. 2B is uh, Tyreek Hill. 2B is, is Tyreek. The cheetah. Yes. Okay. The cheetah. I still can't. I still can't move Diggs out of that out of that next spot. I gotta go. You think that people is that what you, you said? People be no, mad at that? No. no I, that's why. That's why I moved it to 2B. I had to. I had to. I had to do that like that. Okay. I still can't. I still can't move Diggs. Um, my next one, and I'm. I'm gonna jump back to Diggs, but I'm gonna just throw this out here so people can think about it. Calvin Ridley. Okay, explain this. Calvin Ridley to me is, if if you see, and this is what I want to do. I almost want to like me and a couple other guys that have been paid and been blessed by this league to to go out here and and be able to provide provide for our families and have a surplus. I think we need to get together and somehow get with these TV networks, put some money in so that the people can at least to get this thing kick started. It's a little bit of a joke, but I'm I'm halfway serious too. <laughs> we got to get this kick started. I want people to have access, whether it's to practice tape or to, this is more realistic, I feel like, to game tape to really watch people, watch angles of the games. You could either watch the TV copy or whether it's, it goes to a database after the game is over or whatever, 
I want people to have access to the tape, like how we could watch tape after the game. Right, right. So you could really find out who your favorite players are. Mm. And if you could really see Calvin Ridley go to work the way that I see him, the way I watch his tape, the way that a lot of the guys that I know that that know the position well watch his tape, I think it'd be a lot of – I mean, you could say whatever you want about last year. They ain't got nothing to do with football. Like, And it was silly anyway. Right. But he's going to be back this year, and I think that he's going to have a, a really, really wow. good year. And that receiver, as you know – we don't control everything, so we control our tape. That's Watch right. the boy's tape. He's out there doing stuff to people consistently with the routes. He don't give nobody a break. I feel like I asked a couple corners, and I won't say none of their names, but a couple couple years ago I asked him at the Pro Bowl. I was like, what separates me from other receivers that you think are really good? You know, because at this point, this is, you know, people were still they – were, they were like, yeah, Tay, Tay's the guy. He's, he's the, the best in the league. Like, I, it was – it was in that that when that started, so I was already in in that those type of talks, and they said different between you and, and the next man, and I think it's a couple other guys now that's that's the same way, but you don't ever get a DB a break. Every time you got a route, they gonna fill it. Whether or not you get the ball, mm -hmm. that's that's what he said. Like guys that have that I played against, and they they've guarded me. They maybe had to follow me, whatever. Every time you line up, you are gonna give me the work. Like whether or not you win, I know I gotta work. And it almost affects me to the point where I can't even be the same celebratory me after the play because I know I got to lock back in for the next play. And you're a, a high, high target guy right. when you know catching, I think, 21 balls in the game, setting mm -hmm. an all time record. Shout out to B. Marsh. You trying to break that? You know what I'm saying? I, I need that. Your head coach. I need that. He, he's, I, think he, I think he might be able to get that. Now, I, I I'm not, I'm not going to do that. I'm just, making, I'm just having fun. <laughs> having fun. But, um, but yeah, I, they told me that you're the one that's going to give it to me every single time you line up there. I'm gonna get that work every single time, and I know, like it's it's stuff that I got built in now. Like, and not to talk about me, but regardless, just my mindset with with running routes, I could have a comeback. It might be sticky coverage. If that if I come out of it and you kind of on my hip, and I look and I see that quarterback ain't through the ball, I'm gonna turn it up so quick and make you feel like it was a comeback pump. <laughs> I don't want, I don't never want you to think like you you cover me regardless. So I'm gonna find a way. If I got a slant. And, and you somehow inside leverage, and, that, and I'm looking for the ball in case it's there. If it ain't there and I get out of that thing, I'm going to make you feel like it was, a, it was a slant return. I never want you to feel like you won. Even, even if he did, might have played the comeback perfect, but my mentality is always win. Wow. Where did you pick that up from? That's just the pride, man. Like I, I, bro, I never, ever, bro, I've never, ever heard anybody say anything like that. I've never thought about that. I, the way I think about the receiver position is in, in my pride and what I do. That's the reason why, because I know it's somebody on the other side, whether they're on the sideline or if it's the corner that's guarding me or the guy backing him up. Somebody heard about me. They already know about the tape. I know they coach is talking about it. So I feel like it's, it's like a, I'm, I'm obligated to, to show him what I'm about because I don't want him going back. Cause everybody, you, you that's talk to genius him. because like what you just said, it's so genius because if you run a comeback and you like you said, if it's sticky coverage yeah. or if you run a slant and it's sticky coverage, and 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 the guys are watching film because yeah. everybody's watching your film. Every, yeah. Coaches, players, everybody. Yeah. Other wide receivers. And like, oh, this is the weakness. Correct. They don't know your weakness now because, now, now like you said, oh damn, he 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 did it like that, yeah. so I could get sticky. Correct. But damn, I gotta. Correct. Oh my goodness. Yeah, yeah. I mean, who taught you that? That's just something that I picked up on. I have I have a great mentor and and receiver coach. Keith Williams that I had, he, he brought me in to Fresno State. and Where is he in Detroit he's, now? He's in Baltimore Baltimore, now. Baltimore. Yeah, so he he's over there with Odell and, and the boys. So he, uh, I mean, he taught me a lot, but that's wow. just something that I picked up on. And, and really, I, you know, just based off the way I run routes, it kind of came com like comfortably to me. It was something that I did once, and I came out, and I was like, I don't like this. And I seen him kind of getting fired up. He dove on it. It was, it was in a Packer practice. Jermaine Williams dove on it. And I was like, damn, like this might be a pick. I came out of it, and I looked back at quarterback. Wasn't looking at me. Thank, I mean, thankfully, because he he Tremont's a really good pattern read guy. So he probably seen something go to the flat or something, and then knew I was I was getting ready to to do it. It was off of a curl, not a comeback. And I came here. I sat down. As soon as I came, he dove on it. And as soon as I looked and saw he wasn't throwing it, I pumped it and went back. And it was never that. And the quarterback wasn't looking. I didn't get the ball. Nothing. <laughs> But in his mind, he got whooped because of that. Right. You know, like, yeah, so like now he, he now had no he, idea. Now he back in the lab watching film like, damn, exactly. where like, did I go wrong? Where did but I he go was wrong? right. He was right the whole time. But but he'll never know until now, I guess. But but yeah. You're a jerk. <laughs> <laughs> Take a drink, man. Take a shake your sip. Hey, man. <laughs> That's genius. 
All right, yeah, we didn't we didn't got off on a tangent about me. That's we were supposed to be talking though. about some other. Some but other but food. as part of the conversation, I wanted to get into your genius, right? Because you know you're a guy that works his you know work your ass off, but you don't really po- you don't post anything. And mm-hmm. I, I remember you saying this a couple of years ago. Just because it, just because I'm not posting, don't don't think that I'm not working. Oh yeah, you know what I'm saying. I mean and, the, the season, like I said, as you know, the season shows what you've been doing. So me trying to prove, like I'm in the league, like you better be working out. Showing right. like proving, and I, I don't knock guys that that do it, but if you on there and you got these intricate workouts, you getting medicine balls thrown at you while you doing spin moves and all of this. Like, be intentional about what you're doing. Like, like if you're gonna if you're gonna do anything, working out wise, like call it cardio if you just want to get and run out, out out there. But be intentional about what you're doing. If you're working on your feet, like just just be a good judge of character. Maybe not everybody will know, but just be. Think for yourself as far as what you think can actually apply to make you a better football player. Because right, that's right. what I do when I go and work out, and it's not going to be sexy. It's really not nothing to post. Some of, like a lot of the time, it looks good. The feed, you know, do, working on some of the speed and agility, agility stuff. But for the most part, you know, for for me, it's just about showing it in the, in the games. You know, I show up, and because none of those videos don't mean nothing. It, they might get reposted by the NFL and all that stuff. But unless you you go off and you got something to show for it, it don't matter. Right. All right, uh, Jazz. I know Jazz is our our art director for I Am Athlete. I know he's watching this live. He better be watching this live. Um, can we do something? Um, can we create a a, a T of uh, Tay's last top five list and put it out there? I feel like we can at least sell out in the first twenty four hours. This is his <laughs> last top five while he's an active player. So right now we have Tay at one. At two, we have the Jet, Justin Jefferson. Two B. Two B, we have uh, Stephon Diggs. No, no, Tyreek. Ty- Ty- and then three. We three, got, we got have Diggs. Diggs. Four. Four, you have Calvin Ridley. That Calvin you Ridley. Sh- you shocked the world on that one, yeah. or the football world at least. Yeah. And then five is you said it's going to be another shocker. Yeah. Um, I think I know who you want to say too. Who Who you think I'm gonna say? And I'm gonna be. I'll keep. What's it his up. nationality? <laughs> What's his nationality? Man. <laughs> I'm, I'm really curious to hear who you got to say first before well, I say it. Because you said Calvin. Here's what When you said Calvin, here's here's what came to mind. Mm-hmm. You, re, you, are, um, you are a uh, real football fan. You are a connoisseur of work. Um, you understand that it's not a – you you get it. That's why it's impossible to do top five, right? Because a guy can have seventy catches and be the best receiver in the league, or the best quarter, or or, or guy, a corner can have two picks and still be the best corner. Right. But you're not saying that because the guy just had fourteen or right. twelve. Yeah. So when you said Calvin Ridley, I said, okay, I see what type of receiver he loves and respects. Yeah. Right. And those receivers, um, shifty. You know, we're talking about line of scrimmage, you can't touch me. Mm-hmm. I think you respect route running. Mm-hmm. I think you respect consistency. I heard you say that at least twice. That's consistency. Huge. That's huge. Right? Um, and I can throw a few things in there as well. So there's a couple guys that come to mind. There's uh, um, there's Cooper, mm-hmm. Amari Cooper. There's also uh, Cooper Cup. Um, there's also, um, you know, yeah, big guy. I don't, I don't think you respect the big guy because you like the shiftiness, and we don't move like y'all move. But you, <laughs> what's crazy is you taller than what most people probably think. Yeah, and you shifty like that, which is crazy. But you got Mike Evans, who's crazy consistent. I mean, Mike is the most consistent. I mean, that's one of the dudes right there. Like, <clears throat> that's 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 crazy. You so I got a five A and a five B. Five A is Mike Evans. So I was right. Five A is Mike Evans. <laughs> My five B is and and that's not the one I that shouldn't make nobody mad. If people if people right. are mad about that, then you don't respect just somebody coming out and doing it. I mean, since we came in the league together, this man ain't not tested a rack since he's been in the that's league. Right. There's nothing you can say about that. So Mike in, is in there. And then um, you know, like I said, it's so hard. I, lo- I love Cooper. Cooper's up there too. I want to see Cooper come back this year. I want to see what he does. And not that he has anything to prove to anybody or me, but it, like I said, it's just so many Dion. guys. See, and that's the thing. Hop, Hop just been out for a minute now. Hop is one of my guys too. Like I love Hop to death, but I want to be fair to guys. We talk about consistency. He was one of the most consistent guys, period, with 19 different quarterbacks, you know, all different levels of playing. Yeah. 
But if I had to go somebody based off of they've been playing and, and what I like and what I think that they own, and I think they need more respect moving forward. And honestly, I've been – people compared a lot of dudes to me as they come into the league and stuff. This is a guy that's younger than me, but – which most are at this point, which is the ridiculous right. part. But <laughs> C.D. Lamb. Wow, that is a shocker to me. I like C.D. Lamb a lot. People, people. That's that's the one that. If no anybody, disrespect to C D Lamb, but that is I'm shocked. Yeah, and and when I'm picking it, I'm not picking it off of like I'm not picking it off of just the 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 most attractive and what people want to hear. Like, cause I would have never threw like if it, people wouldn't expect or be mad at me for leaving Calvin Ridley out. But I'm gonna tell you like how I feel. And if you watch the way C D plays, and I think he's gonna keep growing. And I talked to him this offseason a couple of times, and I said, bro, just keep doing what you're doing. Keep staying with you. What keep staying on what you're on right now, because this is gonna give you the type of credit and, and right. respect that that you deserve moving forward. You just got to keep doing it. Put something behind it. He remind me of myself a lot as far as the way he moves, and I feel like at, at that point when I was, you know, you ask him, he'll tell you he likes where he's at with his game right now. I felt like since 2017 that I had it not figured out to the point that I do now, but I was I was on to something. And I feel like he's getting that 2018 maybe right. Tay respect right now. Right. And the more he continues to do and gets better, he's going to get a lot more respect. And then it's it's so many other guys too. Like I said, I mean, obviously Chase, that's the one that people are probably going to be mad at, most mad about. But, yep. you know, Chase is I, – I don't have – I think he he's for sure a top five, but you can I can only pick so many guys. Right. You got you got Coop, you got Cooper – and, and and Chase, those guys can be mixed in at any point in that top five for me too. So there you go. it's gonna be somebody pissed off. But I love all y'all. I swear to God, I got. I'm and I'm not. I mean, you you could keep me out your list if you want, but you'd be wrong. But there you go. I love it. So Jazz, um, let's mock up a graphic for uh, Tay's last top five. Oh hell, here or, we go. I don't even know that's top five. It was like eight. Yeah, that we, was because it's you. We gonna we gonna let you do the A. <laughs> B and C and all that other stuff. Uh, bro, what the hell happened with the last dance? You talking about the Michael Jordan uh, documentary? Well, I think the Green he, Bay, uh, the Green Bay, <laughs> the Green Bay <laughs> Packers documentary. See, this is how I get messy. Because <laughs> like before, before like there was a there was like. <laughs> You know, I'm known to get messy. You want to take another little sip? Come on, yeah, might as well. He tried, <laughs> what you trying to you trying to get some real answers? I was trying to get. Some, well, I thought it was pretty cool. Um, Brian Gutenkoos, like there was supposed to be like a little chat where everybody was talking about the last dance, last dance. Yeah. Is that true? Did y'all have a group chat? We, I, don't, I have no idea what you talking about. <laughs> <laughs> but no, there was no, there was no group chat. I don't know anything about that. <laughs> The only thing where the last dance got introduced was that we, I mean, it was the off season. We was poking a little fun and you know, it is what it is. Like I got asked a million times after that about that, but I put, I posted it and then, you know, Aaron, I put it up too and it just started a whole bunch of stuff and it, it, it wound up being the last dance when it wasn't <laughs> even really like a, a real thing. It was more so like, you know, obviously me going into that last year, my contract in green Bay, I talked to him and I told the, you know, the Packers and everything, um, you know, based off of what I had done, like you want to see another year of this before I get paid? Like I feel like this is, you know, I'm, I'm basically on a tag this year. It's less money than a tag, and it's no security, just like a tag would be. And you know, they allowed me to play that whole year without getting paid, and then I had another year of what I do, and it made it tough on them. And then you know, I had some decisions to make. So that's that's basically what what came down to that. And obviously, the whole Aaron thing and and his uncertainty of his future in Green Bay factored in heavy for me. So if, if they would, if they would have paid you the year that you wanted to get paid, you still be in Green Bay. I, I would have been in Green Bay for sure. So what happened? Like they was it was it like the the number wasn't right, the years, the guarantee? Is I think it was a little bit of everything, but it was more so, you know, on as far as what I the feedback I got from them was the the cash flow and, you know, based off of what was available and um, you know, I don't, I don't know. I never was told that they don't think that's what my value was. And I never even really gave a true number. Um, I just, we got an initial, uh, offer and it, it, cause I'm, one thing you don't do is go in and say, here, this is what I want. You know, I want to hear what you think I'm worth. And then from there, I'll tell you. So once I got the number, what was that to, number? to me, it was, it was, it was South of 20. South of 20? And, and what at, with the, with the Raiders? 28.5. 
It was south of 20? Yeah. That was that was going into my last year. Without before I played that last year. You but know, you already you it was like you are like you did three years in a row. I know the last year was the yeah. the third year in a row where you went dumb, yeah. but yeah. I, I feel the same way. That's why I was confused and I, I showed up for my team. I did you know, I was the leader that I was supposed to be and showed up and put it all on the line. It wasn't like I was playing ball like I didn't have security either. Like I was out there flying across the middle doing my thing like like I always do and then um, just unfortunately, we didn't. That didn't work out. But it, it, honestly, there was no bad blood. I still respect and talk to a lot of those guys over there. Check in, you know. If, if I see, I still follow the Packers on Instagram too. Just yeah. let them know that I still got love for them in the whole community over there. So, when's the last um, time you talked to Brian Gutenkus? I actually texted him and checked in on him and, and just you know just said said hello. I think it was during the uh, during the Pro Bowl or something when some of the guys were out here. I, I tapped in and. Just wanted to see what, how he was doing and oh, that's good. text Matt LaFleur. You know, they say Matt LaFleur's birthday or whatever, so I text him on his birthday and, and say hello and stuff like that. So, like I said, genuine love. I talked to Mark Murphy over there, the president, recently. Had a good conversation um, after a round of golf. So, um, yeah, no, nothing but love for those people still at this point. It was just a business decision that had to be made, and I had to make it. See, that's why he is one of the most real – and best human beings on the planet. Like they offered you, if they offered me south of 20 million, I don't even wanna, I, I don't even wanna, I can't even, cause I, I get so much heat. I don't even wanna tell people what I would, how I responded, I, what I, I would've did. I feel like I know. But you are texting like the president, the CEO of the Green Bay Packers still, the head coach, Brian Gutenkus. Yeah. I feel like Brian Gutenkus is the reason why the Green Bay Packers are in this position. <laughs> and you well, still like, you know what? It is what it is. Like, look, that's why you're a human. Stop tell it, saying my boy is a, a, a villain. He's not a villain. Stop nah, it. Far from it. No, nah, <laughs> the, the thing, I mean, with it's just a lot of history. I mean, when you're in a place, that's like that's like saying that you can't have a mutual breakup with your, your, your lady after y'all was together. Like, how many times? I'm sure you got plenty of boys, maybe even yourself at some point in your life. You know, you you decided like we just gonna walk away, and it may I don't know they might have ended all crazy. I don't know. Actually, it probably did, but uh, but but you know they they do it does happen that way sometimes for some people out there. When when some Tell people me. got some smooth breakups out here, and I guess I was I'm one of the ones that that could do that. <laughs> uh, uh, no, I don't I don't know if any of my homeboys had smooth breakups. None of your guys, but do that. but I am shocked that you guys had a smooth breakup with the Green Bay Packers because, you know, going into that last year um, and you guys were playing around with that, just that, that, that sound bite last dance, you know, everybody thought it was just a lot of turmoil there and everybody felt like it was a lot of dysfunction. So I'm happy that, you know, you were able to move on the right way. Um, I feel like there's a lot of athletes that can learn from you. I'm a guy that, you know, didn't do the, those things the right way when I was playing all the time. And so I respect that. I respect that a lot. Um, this article, The Ringer, mm -hmm. why was that so important for you? I mean, do you have any regrets from that article? And the reason why I say that, because sometimes, like, even in this conversation, right, there might be something we're saying, we're having a good time, and then you're like, damn, like, I shouldn't have said that, or maybe I should have said it this way. Yeah. But the biggest takeaway for a lot of people was like, yo, it's not it's not a quarterback, it's me. Yeah. You know, do, is there any regrets or is there anything that you would change there? My thing is this. If I if I said it, I meant it. But there's always a time like I'm I'm the guy. This is if I had to just sum it up for you. If I want to say F you, I got no problem saying F you and letting the world hear that. But if it's not supposed to be that and then the narrative the narrative gets changed as I'm trying to put somebody down or, you know, some of the sound bites and the clips you see ESPN, you know, it's the off season, so it's not as much to talk about. They can't wait to grab something that the first right. thing they say and throw it on, on TV or on social. So for me, I don't like the, the narrative and the, you know, some things got kind of lost in translation a little bit. It wasn't about, you know, it wasn't a, a unsolicited thing where I just call somebody up and say, Hey, let, let the, let the press know, you know, this is, I'm Devontae Adams. I don't need nobody. I don't, I don't need a quarterback. Like, it's not about that. It was more so based off of, um, you know, some of the things were to give the writer context of my thought process to know how to write. And then a couple quotes got used, but I don't take back anything. I just don't want people involved, you know, them saying things and trying to make it seem like I wasn't 
satisfied with Jimmy. Like, obviously, I was Aaron Rodgers was my quarterback for eight years. I was obviously, you know, poking at fun throughout the offseason, Pro Bowl and all that stuff, you know, doing some cryptic tweeting, you know, to, to poke fun at the whole. Being messy. Be, being messy, yeah, trying to trying to just give people something to, yeah. something to, to laugh at, something They call to, me Messy B. Yeah, you, that's, you, well, you, the, you Messy A. It's messy. <laughs> <laughs> I might be Messy B. But, um, but, yeah, I just, I'm the type of guy that if I, if I want to send that message, I'll do it. But if I don't want to get people involved and make it seem like I'm not excited that Jimmy, like, I, I'm ecstatic that Jimmy's here. Jimmy's a great guy. I've been around him a lot now. Spend a lot of time at the facility when we're doing these workouts. Um, and, and I like the guy that he is. And obviously, we all working to get healthy to, to be in a great spot to where we can go out there and, and, and have a good, a good year. And I'm very optimistic about it. And, you know, the narrative got changed that, like, I was, you know, I, 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 don't, I don't care who my quarterback is or, you know, I, I didn't, I'm not happy that we decided to go with Jimmy. I was trying to get Aaron because I didn't even know Jimmy was, a part, was in our thought process at the time, you know. And, I'm I'm extremely excited that he's here with us now. So when they involve Jimmy, they involve Aaron and make it seem like I'm saying like, you know, F Aaron. Like that that was never it. It was a question that was asked to me about how does it feel coming here, getting, you know, racking up your third all pro after being, you know, on the Packers playing with Aaron so long. And I said, well, the reality is you play with Aaron Rodgers, you play with a quarterback of that magnitude, especially when you're young, they're going to attribute a lot of your success to the, the person who's throwing the ball. Mm -hmm. And when it's Aaron, like that's, it's going to go to another level. So, I, you know, in a, in a sense, when I was a young player, I was um, kind of in Aaron's shadow a little bit, and it turned into that. But, you know, so w when it comes out that I said I don't need a quarterback, I'm not really worried about how Aaron's going to take that because that's stuff that he said, and he said that publicly on TV. He said it to me millions of times that it doesn't matter who's throwing me the ball. I'm going to be who, I'm, who, I'm, who I am. So we even talked about it the other day when the thing came out. I just texted him like, why are they always trying to turn us against each other, man? They want to make us enemies when Aaron's a good friend of mine. And y'all were just at the uh, yeah the derby together. The derby together. Our our friendship has gotten better since we've been. It's the whole um, how do, how does the saying go? Um, you said uh, distance, distance makes the the heart, heart grow fonder. Yep. Yeah, that that whole thing. Like we we had a little time away, and and now we can't we can't wait to try to get to the derby or try to get around together. He came out here in the summer before the season even started, and we played golf out here in Vegas. So, so, so why didn't he choose the Raiders over the Jets? See, that's – I mean, I, I, I can't answer that question, but you yeah, can say the same that's to me. Your best, that's your friend. Y'all was at the Derby together. Y'all playing golf but together. But you can hit me with the same question. Why did, why did you leave Green Bay after having success with, they, with Aaron they, the whole they, time? They said north, south of uh, 20. It's, but it's always a reason. So it's something going on. But obviously, you know, you got to make the, the best decision for you, your family, your right. people that, that right. are close to you in the, in the moment. And it's never going to be easy. So I can never, you know, I left myself. So I can never look at him like, you know, Aaron, Aaron don't love me. He's not, he's not my yeah. guy because he left. Like, I did it first. And then, you know, you got decisions to make. It's never going to be did easy. Did he consider the Raiders? I, I believe so. I think it's just, I'm not even exactly sure how the whole process went because I wanted to let the, you know, our front office and, and coaches and his team and, and himself kind of figure that out after the – I mean, when you're at a place for, I believe, 18 years going into 19, I mean, it's a lot of decisions you got to make. So hey, you were a terrible recruit. I don't, I don't want to – look, I, we, if, if you think that I wasn't in his – I mean, Tay, I, could, I sent this man a text after they last the, game. Let me see the text exchange between you and a -Rod. You want to like, see it? Let me see. <laughs> you can't read it. I can show you the <laughs> – I'll show you the length. I sent this man a text like this after the game. And it was probably three hours after the last game, the Detroit game, when they when they lost that thing. And I, I will say I recruited the the hell out of Aaron Rodgers. I don't want to say that because then now it makes it look like Aaron said right. screw me, even though I did that. When really he made the best decision he, for himself. He had to make the best decision for himself, which is exactly the same thing that I did. Right. So, like I said, I can show you. I I was on the man trying to make sure, but you also got to be respectful to a certain extent and understand that. People got to work through stuff in their own head. Right. You know, um, you know, my, my, my old offensive coordinator from Green Bay, Nate Hackett, is out there. So the yeah. football aspect comes in, too. Like, you know, familiarity and, you know, the comfort, comfortability with right. that coaching staff. So having him in the room, I'm sure, is a, a piece for him that, that allowed him to make that move, right. too. But, you know, we, I, never, I never say, Aaron, why you, why you didn't decide to come to me? You know, why? I just I, I let him know I was interested, highly interested in him coming. And, you know, he had some decisions to make, whether that was retirement, uh, staying in Green Bay, or going elsewhere, and that's never easy. Have, has he – so you were a terrible recruit uh, <laughs> getting him to the Raiders. 
All right, but we are happy with uh, Jimmy G. Jimmy G is one of the most winningest quarterback and most efficient passers. And great dude. And great dude, great, great teammate, dude. great leader. You yeah. talked about that in the Ringer article. Uh, so we are happy, all right? You know, we listen, we, we ain't getting too messy over here. We just like to have real conversations. So we are happy with Jimmy G, but... You know, we didn't know Jimmy G was available, so we got to have this conversation. So uh, you were a terrible, terrible recruit to get your guy yeah, of horrible. eight years to the Raiders. Um, was he a terrible recruit to get you to do the darkness retreat in the uh, ayahuasca? Has he ever tried to recruit you? Bruh, <laughs> tell me. Tell the truth, bro. Have you ever done ayahuasca or thought about it? Bruh, I mean, you can call me whatever you want, but I if, if I had to – you could offer me a billion, a whole B right now. I have no idea what that is. You never had a conversation with him? I leave that type of stuff to the people that's on whatever it is. I promise you, I promise you, if you put a billion dollars in cash on this table right now, spread it out right now, I have to walk out. I couldn't tell you can, what it is. Can we get some more ice? We got to have another drink because we talk about A-Rod right now. Ayahuasca, darkness retreat. Yeah, I didn't well, get can, invited can, to that. All right, one. really quickly because let's get let's, – let's get, Let's hit A Rod real quick and then get off of A Rod and let's talk about the future and let's talk about some things that people really want to hear. I got a car picking me up, by the way. So I'm that's right. Just so they know. There you go. There you go, Lobos. Um <clears throat> Bro, he's different, but I like him. I love him. I like him. It's it, honestly, it's a lot of people in my circle that you gotta learn to love. And that's because I'm not I'm not the type of dude, I don't just meet guys in the league and just jail with them right out the gate. Like, I don't go looking for that, and especially when I was younger. I'm not going to go just running and asking one of the top guys, and we play receiver, we know each other, so we're going to kick it. Like, that's not how my relationships are formed. It's usually from spending a good amount of time with somebody, learning them, and then learning to love them for who they are. And that's he's definitely one of those guys. But, like, I, I play with Jay Cutler, and they call him Smoking Jay, and they always have these famous, like, Pictures of you. <laughs> I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Jay Cut. He smoked cigarettes? What's no, he don't smoke no cigarettes. But this dude is one of the smartest people I've ever been around, and he was always seeing around the corner, mm -hmm. right? We'll come in the cafeteria. He was the dude that was looking at being gluten free or looking at what he's putting in his body. And so, like, nutrition, like, the reason why I take care of my body the way I do is because of Jay Cutler. Mm -hmm. uh, the way I started parenting my kids is because of Jay Cutler. Child rearing, we're talking about night nannies and yeah. sleep training and all types of stuff, right? Right, right. I learned that from asking him questions, mm -hmm. right? And But sitting at the cafe in the cafeteria or in the locker room or maybe we're out at dinner or something on a double date and hearing him talk about different things in the books that he was reading, um, can you give the Jets fans out there or just the world, you know, a little glimpse of who Aaron Rodgers is? Because I feel like I don't know if he's misunderstood. And I asked him this question. He sat he sat with me gracefully. Mm -hmm. He blessed me with his first uh, sit down as a Jet. And um, I asked, that was my first question, does he feel misunderstood? But I, I don't know if he's misunderstood or understood. I think, I mean, based off of the – the common feeling about him, I would say that he's definitely misunderstood. He's a guy that is very, he's, he's like an ogre. You remember in Shrek when they say he's like, a, I'm like a, a ogre has, has layers, like an onion. That's, that's him. It's, it's a lot to him, and it's a lot that he's been through, and it's a lot that he stands for, which makes him who he is and has made him who he is, honestly. And... You know, when you when you got certain things about you that are positive things that have led to positive, um, you know, pieces of your life. That's appreciate for you. it. Um, sometimes you got to just say, forget what everybody else is talking about. Like that, this has made me me, and it's made me the man that I am. And unless you're a, a horrible human because of that, which I would never say, any of the things that I know about him and le have learned about him will make him a horrible person. You got to just stick to what makes you you and w what has led to your success. And if you're a bad guy, but you've done things that and that have got you in a position where you're successful, then I would say that you have to worry about being a good guy because that doesn't trump that. Mm -hmm. But but in his situation, he's a good guy and he does a lot for people and people don't realize. And he's kind of like me in a sense that the things that we do are genuinely out of love and, and just out of the kindness of our hearts. So you may not even know about 90 percent of the moves that he makes to help people or the people that he helps, the way he treated people in the, in the Green Bay facility the relationship he had with, you know, one of the 
special needs guys that in Green Bay, like they, they had a legit friendship that nobody would ever understand unless right. you were on that team and you were in that building. So he's a very unique person that, like I said, has a lot of layers to him. And you may not like every layer, but he's unapologetically him. And, and I'm, I'm the same way. I, I pride myself on being who I am, regardless how people feel about it. And I just try to be the best person, obviously. And um, so, yeah, I say he's definitely misunderstood. Right. I love it. That ice is for you. Um, before we move on, and we'll wrap up here. Um, we'll land a plane here in a few minutes. I want to get your thoughts on some some life converse, some life topics. Mm -hmm. um, what's your early predictions for the Jets? And I know this is tough. You're in the AFC, Ooh. but you just take your take take your take your active player hat off. You're just a buddy of Aaron Rodgers. He's with the Jets. What do you see them accomplishing with him underneath center with a top five defense? Well, I think we saw what they did at least early the first first half of the season. I don't remember at what point it, you know, it, it wasn't going as smooth as it started off. But the way that team looked last year, I see that being a really, really strong team. I, you add an Aaron to the equation, like the quarterback position was probably the most controversial position of that team. And if you add the best to do it, um, to that equation, that's just gonna make it a, a recipe for success for them for them boys. Um, they got real solid defense, a lot of young guys. Um, Garrett Williams, Wilson. Um, I, I, if if somehow I decide I'm not done with my top five and I, I'm gonna come out of it, I feel like next year he might be somewhere in the middle or the top of that, based off what I saw this first year. Mm. It's just hard to put any rookie, especially with all the guys we were talking about, as as a top five receiver in the league, but. Garrett Wilson is, is somebody that's coming along and I, I believe in. I think he's really good. They got Allen Lazard. You know, he played with us in Green Bay, so that's another familiar target for him. And like I said, that defense is stacked. So I see him being a good deer. I don't know how many how many wins they have. I'm hoping they if have you had to guess. I'm hoping they have at least one because they come into Vegas. So that's <laughs> that's, that's that's the plan to, to knock them knock them off. I mean, that's that's like I don't think I looked at the calendar, but it might be like week ten or something like that. So we'll we'll see. We'll see with that game. That's gonna be a fun one either way. But. Is it is it championship or bust for them? I got, mean, for for Aaron, I know his mentality is is probably that, uh, for a lack of better words, bro, you know, I wouldn't I wouldn't say or bust, but I would say that's definitely what you're trying to do when you're almost 20 years in. You you're trying to get a bowl. Let me. I know I said we were gonna move on, but I was able to call this seven on seven tournament out in Cali a couple months back, and and I was saying this before. I saw him up close and personal. Like I played against you guys twice a year when I was in Chicago and played against them several times through my 13 year career. Mm -hmm. um, so before this, I was like, yo, he's the best thrower of the football that I've ever seen. And then seeing him in the seven on seven tournament, playing against just everybody, retired guys, active guys, high school kids, it solidified it for me. Yeah. I seen this dude drop back throw a no-look 40-yard go ball. So can you validate that? Do you believe that he's the best thrower of the football ever? Or can you talk a little bit about how special he is throwing the ball? See, what I can talk about it right now, but one day when we when we got some of this and we maybe at my crib or your right. spot or whatever, I got clips. I mean, I got, I got magazines of, of this man just doing ridiculous stuff. Like, that's why I say the practice clip, like I want to put money in the, you know, joking about wanting to put money into people having access to that. And then you can really see what people are about. Like if people could see me work, if they could see Aaron work and some of these other guys behind the scenes, it would just like, you think that Aaron is this God? Like, I don't even know what you would think of him if you saw him in practice and stuff, some of the stuff that I saw day to day. The things that I saw when I first got to Green Bay validate exactly what you're saying right now. He, he was doing stuff like, there's a no look pass, he, I was I was a victim of this, so he sent me. I got sent to the flat in the concept, and I never seen somebody. No, so a no look is usually you hear and you throw there. This man was looking at me. I'm in the flat looking at him. <laughs> he looks off of me quick and then throws it to me. <laughs> I look to look at the at the curl, like trying to see who who the ball going to. The ball literally hits me in my chest, and I just look at this man, and the way he was looking in his face was like, he he got a lot to learn, and and I definitely I said from this point on I'm keeping my eyes on him until I hear the crowd cheering that somebody caught the ball, because in my mind there was no question that this ball was coming to me in the flat. He's looking at me, 
or it, that it was going there. So at first right, he's looking at me. So he's here, and then he's like this. Loads up. He looks away like he's going here. I'm like, oh, damn. He kind of, he whooped me. Yeah, right. Bam, right to me. <laughs> so I'm here like, okay, where? Bam. I'm like, <laughs> I'm thinking somebody threw a ball from somewhere right. else or something. <laughs> so I can definitely validate that. I've seen stuff like that on that level, and I've seen this man no look. Like twenty yard goal or or uh, in routes, like different stuff like that that you just not supposed to have the confidence to to do and and put it on the money. It's just a certain amount of throws. Jerry Rice was at my house last year. Damn, he came out here. Jerry Rice at your house. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, what? <laughs> Go ahead, tell us about that. <laughs> yeah, man. The, the goat the goat pulled up to the crib last year, and we was talking, and he I was I was just asking him some questions. We also did a panel together in in twenty eighteen uh, for the Super Bowl. <laughs> Out there, <laughs> I'm, not, over. I'm not flexing. <laughs> I promise you, I'm not even. I'm not hey, flexing can I tell right the now. People, what you told me is we walk into the studio. Who you playing golf with uh, this week? Oh my gosh, <laughs> this you, dude you, said, <laughs> bro. He said to go pull up to my crib, and he playing golf with Emmett Smith this week. Like, yeah. bro, at the win, we here at the win. Oh, at the win. Yeah, we playing here. Yeah, on Sunday, Sunday, Sunday morning. Thanks for the invite. Yeah, you want to pull up, man? I know you're busy, man. You are busy, man. You gotta go do this with the next guy and right. forget about me after this. <laughs> But uh, so so the goat pulls up to your crib. We talk yeah. about Aaron Rodgers. Boom. Yeah. So we we I'm talking to the goat and we just just shooting it. We was talking and I, I asked something similar when we were at the the deal out in uh, in Atlanta in, in 18. I was like, just you did it at such a high level for so long. Like how how did you not get bored of it? How did you not? How did it become so easy to where you just look? Because I want to. We watch his tape. It was just like looks too easy. Right. He said I didn't catch the ball because I saw it. I caught it because I saw it before. Which is the 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 work that was put in the the amount of reps that he's seen. So that's kind of how I feel out there in the games now, where you see some guys can go crazy in practice, and you have, everybody know a practice warrior, a practice all star, mm -hmm. and they get in the game and the lights too bright because they don't practice all a certain American. way. Practice all American. So that's that's me and Aaron. That's the way we were practicing. and that's what I honestly that's the other than having Jordy and Randall and some of these guys in front of me, obviously in my room, I seen who was an icon when I came in. He was actually in the year that I'm going into, my rookie year. So it would be like the rookies coming in now with me, right. age-wise. So he right. came in, he was going in his 10th year, and I was seeing this dude do stuff that I just, I've literally never seen a quarterback even try before. Not even, not in the workout, nothing. It's unbelievable. So, but that just comes from the reps. Do it, he didn't throw so many balls that, you know, he, he just know where you're at. Right. Go ahead and have a sip of your water right now. I just want to say, tell everyone out there that this is a legendary conversation. You need to do more of these I Am Athlete Lives. Uh, you know we're live. Did I tell you we're live? You, you mentioned that earlier today, yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, so I didn't you know, know I didn't know before today, this but yeah. It's not going to be did. edited. Right? <laughs> you got a sip of your water? You good? Yeah, I'm good. Let me All right, cool. This now. <laughs> so I appreciate everyone rocking with I Am Athlete. Um, bro, earlier talked about, you know, creating some type of platform where we can watch and consume practice clips, you can do it right here on Iron Math. <laughs> what are you bring, talking about? We're the network bring out that. with Blue Wire <laughs> Studios, right? Like we're here. <laughs> but um, I wanna be respectful of your time and there's so much more to talk about. So I'm gonna fly through, like, it's really on you, right? Like, yeah. I, and I appreciate, you know, you really giving us, you know, you today. Um, you don't have to, you know, be so thorough with your answers or whatnot, but I appreciate that. So. I want to throw some names out there, just quickly hit them, right? Because I don't know who – do you have another GOAT coming to your crib tonight? Not, not I, tonight, no. Not tonight. Not. Okay, cool. Yeah. Oh, you got damn Randy Moss coming to the crib, Michael Jordan. You, you, you know Michael Jordan? Are you with Jordan? I am, yeah. Have you met Jordan? I haven't, I haven't met him yet, but we're supposed to be trying to get around in, in out there at his course in, in Jupiter soon. That's oh. the plan. I played there once. Have you? Yeah. I haven't I haven't got out it's there yet. It's just so much good golf in Vegas that it's hard for me to even want to leave right. here. And I've played I played with a lot of the pros out here too, which has made me a lot better golfer. Danielle King is one of my good friends. She's mm -hmm. on the LPGA tour. Um Colin Morikawa, he's one of my neighbors and, and we played together a couple of times. Danielle's brother, Alex King. I mean, these dudes are um it's it's a lot of names. I'm not trying to name drop, but I've I've honestly I'm blessed to have the opportunity to learn from them in this because Everybody that knows me knows that I'm obsessed with golf, and that's going to be a that's big right. part of my life moving forward too. So you, it's good to have. Are you going to go pro? I don't think I'll go pro. I mean, I I would love to have that confidence that I could get there, but I mean, these dudes that that are pros and really at the next level like that, they've been playing golf their whole life. You know, I didn't. I haven't had golf like that. I started in 2018, 
and being in Green Bay, you get seven months out of the year where you, you can't play. You know, we right. play maybe three, <clears throat> two, three rounds in camp before we start off, and then once you get going, you're kind of locked in. What, what, what's the biggest lesson that golf has taught you? And I, I say that because I'm a big chess player. Do you play chess? I don't. Okay, I think you will love that game. It's a game of critical thinking. Yeah. And I love it because it taught me that I move too fast in life. And I need to slow down. That's and funny you say that. That's funny you say that because I got the answer to that question already. Patience. Mm. Patience is what golf has made me because I think about how patient I have to be with myself. Golf has made me a better parent because of it. I think about how frustrated I get at myself. I'm like, you just mad at yourself. Think about how easy it is to get mad at another person that's not comprehending what you're saying. That's not picking up on something as quick as what you what you might you know do yourself or even what, what you wouldn't. So my standard of parenting will never change, but my expectations and the way I respond to certain stuff has gotten, I mean, astronomically in, improved over over time. So I, I definitely thank God for that because I it's 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 the most imperfect sport that that there is. I mean, it's it's really tough to be exactly where you want to be and um, you know, having that and making mistakes and, and working through stuff, that kind of reminds me that, you know, if, if like I said, if, if I'm this frustrated dealing with this, I'm going to at least have to understand so I'm, I'm not being as frustrated in the game and then take that home as well and be have that same amount of patience with my kids too. Um, I'm going to come back to the few names that I want you to hit. Um, but because you just went to parenting, I'm going to stay right here. Uh, <clears throat> give me a sound bite that will last forever when it comes to parenting. And maybe you can dive into being a, a girl dad or if it's just overall parenting. But if you can hit that and then talk, a, yeah, let's hit that first. If you can give me a sound bite that will last forever uh, when it comes to parenting. That's a lot of pressure. That's yeah. a lot of pressure to, to give them something good. Um, has parenting changed you? Parenting, has, I mean, it changed me. I still remember the day that my first was, was born. I mean, I delivered her. So that was one of the, that's probably one of the, my biggest achievements of my life is me doing that. You know, the doctor was in the room, but I solely handled, I was under center. I was the quarterback for the moment. When that, when that, there, hot, 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 green 18. You know, I was, I was, I was ready for it. I, I worked, you know, with the doctor leading up to it to know what to do. So to, to go through that and to, to go from being the doctor, because when I was under center, I was making <laughs> so audibles and everything. I'm up there controlling the offense. I was really dialed in like I was on the field, like that type of like laser focus. It wasn't even like I didn't even have the butterflies of like, oh, my kid is on the way because I had a job to do. I had to make sure my kid gets here first before I can, right. you, know, you know, before I could <laughs> count my chickens. You know? right. So once once she was out of there and I handed it to my wife, it went, I flipped straight into dad mode and it just, it changed me immediately. And then the next day, so she was born, I believe, on a Saturday. Next day, I had a game against Denver, and it didn't turn out to be a, a huge game. But it was I, I remember being, because I was second to last, obviously Aaron was the last one being called in the tunnel. And I remember seeing, sitting there while they, I just hear them calling name after name, and I'm in a tunnel bawling, like my eyes out, just crying. Couldn't help myself. Just like so messed up at the fact that I just brought a kid into this world. I'm like, I just feel all type of emotion. I don't even know why I'm crying, because I'm happy that I got right. my daughter completely healthy, everything was great, but I'm just sitting there just crying like, holy shit, like I really just had a kid and then they just called my name and I got to run out there. I just ran out head down, just trying to be focused. I got my hand up, like like trying to act like I'm, I'm in okay, it. Yeah. And I was, I was just still trying to lock in. Like it took me a minute to really like get to the point where I, okay, I got a football game. Mm -hmm. So that, that mo and, and I'm the most, I pride myself on being locked in and being the most tapped in person at all times. That's why I feel like I don't let no moments slip by me in games. Cause I'm always tapped into it. I never, I never get emotionally detached or I'm not, like I said, I'm not ever not locked in on the field. Mm -hmm. So it, it was a little bit of an adjustment at that game. And then I ended up being okay as we move forward, but it just, I, I'm not an emotional person either. I mean, you might get two cries maximum out of me a year. Like I don't really get into that um, a whole lot. And that's just, that's just the way that I am. But then once that happened, it, it a couple people told me too. They was like, "I think you need a girl to soften you up a little bit." Yeah, and it did exactly that. Right. So, wifey, bro, um, how do we? You guys met in college. Yeah. Allegedly, allegedly, it started where you taught, where you were teaching her, tutoring her over math. 
Usually that shit's the opposite. <laughs> you, know, you know about that. Right. Usually yeah. that shit's the opposite. Yeah. How how do we how do we make how do we make <laughs> marriage last forever, right? Like what's the what's the what's what what is it? Give and take, man. You gotta pick your battles and you gotta be you got you gotta always have them on your mind as far as never like like there's gonna be a lot of things thrown in front of me. There's always gonna be a lot of attention. There's a lot of things I could do, but as long as you think like I always have on my mind, I can never embarrass my wife. Same way before I was married, I can never embarrass my family. I don't wanna embarrass and, and put any dirt on the Adam's name or the Brown's name, my mom's side. So that was something that was on my mind. So anything that I do, anytime I leave the house, I have on my mind, don't embarrass my kids, my, my family, and or my wife. So she's been somebody that's been in my corner since I first got there. Um, first met her, she's one of the first people I met at Fresno State. And I had a girlfriend at the time, so we were just friends, and it was like a genuine friendship. Um, and it was very distant at first because I, I did have a girl, and I didn't want to make her uncomfortable with this other beautiful woman who is, who's just genuinely a friend. But my wife would have never been with me had I ever tried to make a pass at her or nothing while I you know, was with uh, or in, a, in another relationship. So when we, when we got together, it was like, or once I broke up and she wasn't with her boyfriend at the time, Things just we just started spending more time together, and then we had that legit friendship behind it the whole the whole time. And I was transparent with her; she knew that I, when I was single at the time, like you know, I was a single guy, and it was it was no, it was there was nothing that I held back on, and I felt like I could be honest with her about that type of stuff because she was such a good friend to me. And then after more time was spent, it just turned into you know us being together, and then went out to Green Bay with me when I first left and, and got drafted, and then lived together, and from there, you know. The, the rest is history. Right. D let me ask you this question. Do you think that uh, every king needs a queen? I used to feel that way. I think that uh, you you need one if if you need one. It's certain people. I probably met a few people that I know their their mentalities and their mindsets, and I can't I can't put nobody's name out there. But I had a couple teammates. One in particular in Green Bay that I know that he is the one guy that I, I believe he will never be married, and I hope he see this and he'll know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, is he above 6'5"? <laughs> <laughs> he, he is above 6'5". I six know five. who you're talking about. <laughs> go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> I know who you're talking about. <laughs> go. Let's be serious. Yes. So, <laughs> damn, that's crazy. But go, yeah, bro. Yeah, my, my guy. So, it's, it's a couple of them, but I think in my situation where – there's a lot of things that that like in the in the grand scheme I don't think a lot of a lot of things stress me out but there's a lot of small things that I don't really want to have to deal with so having her to help me with things like that you know obviously the the emotional support and just being a rock star in my corner that's you know mm -hmm. honestly been a huge part of what's contributed to me being who I am she's kept me focused always invites me she'll she'll even ask me in the off season it may be a day or two you know, early in the off season where I'm chilling and, and we don't get a workout. Cause, you know, getting old, letting the body heal up, heal up a little bit. She'll be like, did you work out today? <laughs> like she'll hit me with stuff like that. Like I, I, I love that about her that she keeps me in a place. Like we don't have, we don't have a marriage where it's like I'm the, the, the same way that these people walking by see me. You know, she sees me as the person that, you know, we was 18 years old meeting and, now we 30 with two kids and, and married for almost five years coming, you know, up in, in June. So that's that's why I love her, because she gives me the respect that, that I deserve and that she should. But also um, it's, a, it's a great balance of keeping me humble and, and keep it, holding me accountable, too. Right. I love it. Um, all right. We're going to just, you know, we you know what we say in ball. Start fast, finish strong. So yeah. really quickly, all I right. want to let you go. We're having a good time. Might need to do a part two. You know, in a couple of years, hundred percent. You're a dude that only come outside every once in a while. <laughs> you really gotta, like that. I gotta. Well, everything get a little too shuffled when I come out, man. So I gotta, <laughs> I gotta make sure I, I, I'm taking my time when I, when I come. I, out. I respect that. I wish I could do that, but I gotta be in front of the camera. In about three years, y'all might not never see me. I don't believe it, but we'll, we'll see. I'm telling you, bro. Where are you going? I'm gonna be on a boat. I'm gonna be on a yacht in the south of France. In three, do it. In, do it in about five. I'll be with you. You gonna be? <laughs> <laughs> All right, bet. Big, big boat. Big boat. Yes, the goal sir. is I am athlete. We going to be booming. Yeah, Bugatti. We going to have multiple athletes on the, that Bugatti on the platform. money on there, yeah. We going to have multiple contributors on the platform, bro. And I'm going to be sitting back looking at my KPIs and metrics like, okay, we good. We on track. All right, who, who, what's next? Who's next? Love that. 
There we go. Yeah. I wish I could do that, but now I'm working. You own it. Don't retire no time soon. It's no, real over here. I'm, I'm already knowing. <laughs> when I'm and, done, and, but and I'm done. I wanted to say this guy had in my notes. There's so much we can hit. I'm going to get to these people right quick, but bro, language is important. If you want to play until you're 40, you can play until you're 40. Mm -hmm. They, meaning organizations and general managers, yeah. they think that they're still stuck in the 90s and the early 2000s where, you know, wide receivers, you're at 30 now. Even that article I read, like, oh, now you're the OG. You're not the fucking OG. You're right, right. You know, like, if you want to play until you're 40, you can play until you're 40 because of it's on you how you take care of your body, how you eat. Technology's better, better. Right. science is better, there's more information, yeah. we have more access to things, you you're making more money where you can, you can fly to London and go invest in well-being trust and get uh, um, you know, stem cell treatment, you right. got Regenicline, Regenicline out there, there's so many things we can do. So I really wanted to like, leave you with that bro where it's like, okay cool, you just signed for a hundred something million, all right, and sorry to put your business out there, but it's public. Yeah, it's out there, yeah, it's, it's public. But, bro, if you want to go get another bag, you can get another bag. And all this talk about other receivers, like, oh, they going, they could potentially be number one. Like, that don't have to be no time soon. Mm -hmm. It's how you take care of your body. And obviously, you know, uh, and I love, you know, what, what you always say is control what you can control. A lot of people need to understand that. And it's like if, if you know, injury is inevitable. Mm -hmm. We deal with that every single day as professional athletes. But I, I just want you – at this phase of your career, don't think that, okay, this is the last big contract or, you know what, maybe it's four or five more years. No, bro. You can play longer than Ocho. You can play longer than Reggie Wayne, right. Marvin Harrison, Steve Smith. Like, you really can't at an extremely high level. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so I appreciate like, that, bro. Yes. Yeah. But language, you have to believe it. Oh, yeah. And don't, when I when I say I'm hopping on the boat with you, I'm just, I'm making, I'm making jokes. Like, I love this game, man. I mean, you can see the way that I'm playing right now. I, I feel like I got better years ahead of me. And like I said, I'm not talking about the numbers. I, I want to win a Super Bowl. That's obviously the, the number one goal. And the numbers will take care of themselves. But the tape and the way that I go out there and assert myself and, and, the, and, and what I continue to do and, and the way I make DBs feel every time I get out there, that's not going to change as long as I'm playing ball. Right. So whenever I decide I'm done, I'll be, I'll be done then. But when I talk about, you know, I got – five years or whatever like i just be talking yeah i'd be talking mess just just for fun like no. I, I i don't know when it's gonna be and and it may be five like i don't know i have no idea but i'm going into 10 right now i just i just don't want i just think that like it's important for us as players to have this conversation because what the teams are going to say yeah and what the experts are going to say they're looking at data from the 70s 80s 90s right, and early right. 2000s yeah, right yeah, yeah, yeah. okay the you know lifespan of an athlete you hit 30 as a running back, you're done. Uh, wide receiver can give you maybe two to three more, four productive more years. Right. That's not fucking true. No, no, no. You understand? No, it's no. like, because yeah. you know how you work. You know how you take care of your body. Yep. And so, like, I think our language needs to follow that, and we need to put them in position because, like, what I want to see, I want to see you make $40 million a year. I want to mm -hmm. see you play until, if that's what you want. Yeah. Right, because you may hit 35 and be like, you know what, I'm chilling. I'm good. Yeah. I want to go be a full-time girl dad. you like the type of dude that's going to have five daughters. See, look, don't do <laughs> <Yeah>. that. <laughs> when, when, I, when I have my boy, I'm out. I'm out the game. you out the game? I'm out the game after this boy. But if I have if I have four girls, then I ain't having five kids. I'll tell you that. You if, I have, if I have four girls, then we just going to call it in. And Wifey I'll be, probably I'll be hate like, me now. She be after that, right. No, nah, she, she good. She said she won't, you know, three, maybe four. We'll see. But once I had his boy, I'm out. You out. Yeah. All right, really quickly, um, give me your thoughts. Uh, Jordan Love. I'm excited for him, man. I know he's excited I, from what I've heard from some of the other guys. You know, Allen, they would be been around him. He said his whole demeanor has started to shift more toward, you know, because part of it is you don't want to be too assertive as a leader or as something else when you have a guy like Aaron in the building who's obviously the leader of the team. You know, you don't want to ruffle any feathers out of just respect. So he's turned into more of a leader now. Um, and I mean, he's got some talent, so I'm, I'm definitely excited for him. Me leaving had nothing to do with the fact that he was the successor. Um, it was, it was more so about you know all the all the other stuff that went into it. That's not important, but I'm I'm really excited for him. He's a good, really good kid, and and I mean they they gave him a little bit of money, so I know he'll be fired up, and hopefully that'll that'll get his kind of his engine going and, and ready to play. So 
I'm rooting for them. I'm rooting for the Packers in general, um, like I said, other than when they come to Vegas. Give me the number one, like, uh, trait that he has that can potentially make him special, right? Because we need to see it. Yeah. Right? But it, it's one thing that – you saw around this kid in the locker room, in the, in the meeting room, on the field, practice field, where he's like, okay, he's showing me something. You you want you want a just one uh, thing. It could be anything. <clears throat> well, the main thing that comes to mind is something that's that's away from football. But I don't want to make it seem like that's not you know because he's got a really strong arm. I would say that that part. But my main thing is his likability. Like I don't know anybody that has an issue with Jordan Love. Like people genuinely like the person. And that makes it easy to follow somebody when you, you know, you like the guy who's who's screaming at you to finish through the line and all of that stuff because that's the stuff he's gonna do. He's gonna set a good example doing that, and we still look at him like he's a super young guy, but he's been around for a minute now. He's just kind of been in the shadows, so now he got a little opportunity to step up and do his thing. So I'm excited for him. Jimmy G. Another guy I'm excited to to see how he does, man. It's it's gonna be. I know I have something to do with what he does, so it's a little easier for me to speak more confidently for him. I'm definitely not setting any any expectations for him, but based off of the guy that I know that he is now after being around him and, um, you know, what he's achieved in the past already, he's won a lot of games, he's used to doing that. So, you know, teaming up with me, I feel like I can only make him better. So we're we going to go out there. We got a lot of fun this year. Derek Carr, and March 15th, and I, I really want to, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll land a plane here. There's so much more we could have talked about. Love you guys. Thank you, Blue Wire Studios. Maggie and the entire team for always giving me a place to call home when I'm in Vegas. Thank you, Wynn Resort, for giving me a place to call home when I'm in um, when I'm in Vegas. Thank you, uh, thank you, Amazon, for showing some love today. Um, you know, but before we go, March 15th, you have a guy moved on, yeah. right, and then. You know, I guess the question I have for you is, like, when he was benched last year, um, what did you say to him in the locker room after the game? What did you – what did? how did you feel? Well, it wasn't – it wasn't something that we really knew about until after that. So, right after the game, I wasn't – I wasn't aware that that was something that was about to happen. Um, but once it did end up happening, it was – you know, I reached out. I didn't do too much because I didn't want to – you know, I, I, at that point – you know, you you've had you've been the quarterback of a team for nine years with really no controversy. So I can only imagine what his phone looked like because I'm thinking about my phone when I got traded to to the to the Raiders. You know, and and I was in a place for for eight years, and and he was here nine years. I know everybody's blowing him up, so I want to give him his space and be respectful of that. But I was definitely sad for him because I know that this is going to be a big change that he and his family are going to have to go through. He's invested in Vegas a lot, and and he loved. The city and he loved that team and he, he gave his all so that's why I kind of went to social media the way that I did and and talked to him about um, you know and talk or spoke on how he's a solid dude like you can never hate on him as people that was you know and they flipped it and made it seem like I was trying to like like I was upset with our, our management when it's a it's a business you know that's part of it I was, he's not the first guy that I ended up that ended up getting released or traded or something that I was really good friends with um, obviously, it's, it's a little different because I came here to be with him. But like I told the Raiders, I'm not going to leave because he's leaving now. I, I believe in this team, and I believe in you know I owe it to my brothers that are still there. But I, I wish him nothing but the best. Obviously, we still speak um, frequently and and all of that. And I know that one thing I was really excited for him was once he did get released and before he went to the Saints, I had a bunch of those guys over there reaching out. The receivers like like they wanted him so that's that's a good feeling to know you're wanted even though it didn't work out maybe in in one place it's still a good feeling to know that you know the where you're headed guys are potentially headed at that time guys are accepting of it and and seeking to have you on their team throwing you the ball right um to end the show thank you guys so much we're about to wrap it up here after this answer um we'll see you guys monday paper route at 12 we have a big big we have another big wide receiver. I'll tell you offline who we're going to have live on Monday. Okay. You are kind of right. Yeah, this is a legendary conversation, but the show must move on. The show must move on. Monday, I got to I got to I got to put out another show. Yeah, it's going to be a, it's going to be another guy right <laughs> it's here. Be another guy yeah. right here. Just like you just said, Derek Carr gets traded. Yeah. Jimmy G steps in. Right in there. Jimmy G, come yeah. on, let's go. Let's get it. Let's go. And that's going to be I you with the next one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. So paper route will be on at uh on Monday at twelve. 
Uh, we'll run through the entire week through Thursday. Uh, super excited about next week. It's going to be a big week for us. Um, but I want to I want to I want to finish strong here, bro. Um, and then right after this, we can go to go to um, to the end. I guess that's what it is. It's the end. You blessed us with more more than for now. For, for now. For, for now. Yeah. Um, life advice. What's the one thing you can leave with all of us, bro, uh, when it comes to life advice? Protect your mentals, man. That's that's the main that's the main thing. Like I said. Don't invest all of your happiness into one thing ever. You need to, just like with your wealth, whatever it is, you, you spread it out. If you have a, a decent amount of cash or, or a lot in the, in the bank, you don't never want to put it all in, in one spot. You want to you wanna spread it out. That way you know, you know you, you, you're going to be satisfied in multiple different ways. That way if something's not working out, it, it'll at least counterbalance it out for you. Like for me, like I said, I don't I – don't, Wins and losses are not the benchmark for me. It's it's greatness and and being that whatever I and whatever I do. And I don't just mean football. I mean I mean being a dad. I mean being a husband. I mean going to to do certain activities. Like my my pops told me when I was young. My mom's and my pops. I attribute you know basically everything that I've become to them. And and my dad told me always finish a product. So that's that's mm. what I have on my on my mind every time that I do something. Finish it whether it's you know, a season that you don't, you're not playing for anything, and you just got two games left. You got to play against two great opponents, and and finish the product, finish the, the season the right way, um, and and that, that's just the way that I think in everything I do. Don't put all your eggs in one basket, and make sure that you focus on the process, and don't always concern yourself with the result because there's there's probably, I mean, I can't put a percentage on it, but it ain't even 50 that you're gonna succeed in the things that you set out to do. It's going to be less than 50% that you probably succeed in or at least achieve the way that you dreamt of um, achieving it. So for me, I just I spread it out. I got golf. I got my family. I got the football part. I got the, the, the part. The, the football part is the games is what I'm talking about. And then I got the process and the, the way I go out every – you got to focus on the process to really enjoy practice and to give it everything you got every day. You got to really enjoy it. So I try to put my all into the things I really care about. And, and just and just space it out in that way. I know I'll never be disappointed. Love that. I appreciate you, bro, for blessing us with your time, man. This means so much to me. You're a real one. You already know, bro. Hey, I am Athletes back Monday, uh, paper route, 12 o'clock, tap in, and um, we'll see you guys next week. Love you. Peace. Who is this? We had to fight to get a meal. We had to fight to get a meal. On the team, we gotta eat, you know. Sweat, my skills tag. Keep it riding for the fam. You gotta like the fucking wheel straight up. Put in the pass bag, work up in the trash bag. I'll pass a lot of take the test before I pass class. Yeah, and my family needs bread. I had to come correct. That's why.